everybody, this is Loretta McCobb coming to you today uh, for Friday's True Scary Stories uh, that happened to me, family members, or friends in my life. Uh, so today I'm going to do another story when I was a little girl. And uh, we this is the same street cell as our street. And uh, I was about 12 years old when this happened. Um, when we moved in at the other end of our neighborhood, there was an abandoned home. It was a two-story, kind of like a Victorian home. It was all boarded up, but um, the story went, I don't know, I didn't, never witness it or anything, and I never even looked it up. Um, there was a man who had murdered his wife in that house and then had killed himself in that house. And uh, all the kids would dare each other, you know, to go in there and stuff. And no one ever went in there. Um, you know, it was just like a like a prank in the neighborhood. So uh, I used to hang around with my niece. She was about eight or nine at the time. And then three other girls. And I think the other girls were like uh, maybe 11. And then another girl was like 13, 12, 13 around my age. So we decided one day, we were bored, it was summertime, and we decided to go over to that house. And back in those days, the parents really didn't, you know, worry about you being kidnapped and stuff like that. So um, we made it like an adventure. We took like drinks and stuff and flashlights, and we walked over. It was about maybe a 10-minute walk to that house. So we went, and... Um, we noticed that one of the boards to the windows on the first floor was off. So I was like, we could slip through there and go in. You know, we were all like nervous laughing and stuff and uh, like daring each other to go walk up on the porch. And we would do that and run and scream and giggle, you know, it was like a joke. So <clears throat> we went to the, uh, we were going to go through that window, but it was kind of high up from the floor, and that means that we would have to get something like to stand on, or we would have to lift each other up. So what we decided to do, we went to the back of the house, and apparently, I guess there was a basement because there were some little windows close to the ground. And, uh, you know, a lot of the windows have been broken. You know, it was a really old house, and... Um, so we decided to go into that little window. So we went in and the basement was small. It wasn't uh, too big. And I remember it had like this like work table, but it was all uh, already all rotted. And then I remember large beams in there holding up the house, you know, the beams that uh, support beams. And uh, there was really nothing much in there but like cobwebs and dirt and stuff and we were looking around with the flashlights and, um, you know, nothing happened. So we decided to go up the steps and the steps were only like maybe eight steps to get up to the house. So we climbed up the eight steps and the door opened easily and uh, there was like uh, graffiti in the house and the house was pretty much empty with like a lot of... Uh, like broken glass and like a, there was like a few dishes and there was really nothing special in there. So uh, when we came in through from the basement door, the first thing we came in was the kitchen and it was, I remember, blue and white. And it was really, really dark in there. You know, at the time that we went, it was like about 4 o'clock in the afternoon in the summer. The sun was still out, but since the windows were boarded, it was dark in there. So we had our flashlights. And, um, you know, we were, like, exploring and stuff and making noise and stuff. And I could have sworn I heard footsteps. And I told everyone to be quiet, so we all stayed still. And, no, there was nothing. You know, it sounded like someone had, like, work boots on or something and was, like, stomping on the floor. But uh, everyone didn't hear it because we were talking too much. So then we kind of quieted down, and then the next room we walked into was the living room, and there was nothing special, just a square room, and there was a fireplace, and the mantle had been broken, you know, there was nothing special, and then all of a sudden we heard like a little child's giggle, and our eyes got huge, huge, and we were standing like in the middle of the living room, and there was a... A stairway going up, I guess, to where the bedrooms are and bathrooms or whatever was up there. So we were like, no, that, 
that was one of us. Somebody did it, you know, we're like blaming each other. And so um, we were like making a joke out of it, you know. And so we started climbing up the stairway and all the doors on the top of the house started slamming shut. They were slamming like with really great force. You could even see like dust coming off from the ceiling. And um, we heard like an old lady's laugh, like a really uh, raspy laughing. And we ran down those stairs and we ran out the window and uh, I think my niece Oh, my niece. I think my sister Michelle was even crying. It was really scary. I can't believe how forceful those doors got slammed. And we ran all the way till we got back to my house. And uh, we were sitting out on the front uh, step of our house. And my mom comes out. She goes, what's wrong? What's wrong? And uh, we told her the story. And she was like, yeah, you know, she didn't believe us. But she told us never to go back there. She goes, oh, we might get hurt and stuff like that. But I think she knew more than what she was telling us because she got like this worried look on her face. So yeah, we told the neighborhood kids and stuff what had happened and you know, nobody believed us or anything, but we knew what happened. It was quite, quite frightening. And um, I don't even know if that house is still standing there anymore, but it was a very creepy house. Imagine the creepiest house you could think of and that would be it. And um, I don't know, I just, it was really, really scary at the time, and I wouldn't go back in that house again. So yeah, that's one another one of my stories for this True Story uh, Friday, and I hope you guys enjoyed it, and let me know what you think, and I will see you next Friday with another scary story, guys. You guys have a good night. Bye-bye. Hello everybody, this is Loretta McCobb.